Hi, this is Barbara Bunsey. I've been asked to do a video on strokes by several people. I don't think of myself as an expert, but I'm happy to share what I know. I love strokes and stroke designs. Here are two examples of strokes on tin. These are my interpretations of designs done in the 19th century. When I look at an antique piece of tin, my heart sings. I use DecoArt acrylics for each of these designs. I find doing strokes very relaxing. You can fill a large area in with just a few strokes and make it look pretty. The women who flowered these designs, don't you love that term, flowering, in the 19th century, were relatives of the tinsmith, wives, daughters, sisters. They created stylized flowers, leaves, fruits to embellish utilitarian pieces to make them pretty. One of the first things you need to do strokes is a good brush. For comma strokes and S strokes, I like using the Joe Sonia number no. six short liner. You can see the bristles on this brush are basically the same length, and then it doesn't feather when I pull through the stroke like a lot of round brushes do. They, the bristles kind of taper on the ends, and that causes a feathering in the stroke. Another thing to keep in mind is to use the right amount of water and proper loading of the brush. I use a little bit more water than when I'm base coating, but not as much as when I'm doing line work. Without enough moisture, your brush will drag. With too much, you won't get a nice tail at the end of the stroke. You'll end up with a blob. So to load my brush, I wet it well. I'm blotting it on my Bounty paper towel. And then I begin loading it from the side of the puddle. I'm pressing down as I'm loading my brush. So I'm getting all the bristles full of paint, not just the ones on the ends. Right now I'm using DecoArt Avocado. Strokes are a matter of using and releasing pressure. You don't ever turn your brush. I like to keep the lettering side of the brush up to the top so I can see it and make sure I'm not turning the brush. When I'm doing comma strokes from a pattern, many times you see them outlined this way. First of all, this is just your guide. You do not need to fill the entire stroke in. When I'm tracing my pattern, I just like to trace a rounded cap and then pull a line straight through just so I have a direction for the stroke. The cap gives you the size of the stroke. The line gives you the direction of the stroke. So again, I'm loading my paint in my, or my brush in my paint. I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit more water in my brush. I'm just going to tip the tips of my bristles in the water because I think I need just a little bit more moisture in there. I'm going to put my brush down on my surface. Let's get those letters up there. I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure and as I'm pulling through the stroke, I'm slowly releasing up onto the tips of the bristles to get a nice fine tail. If you need a larger stroke, all you need to do is set your brush down, give it a little wiggle to get a little wider cap at the top. Again, slowly pull through the stroke, releasing pressure to get a nice fine tail. You can use the same brush to do small strokes as well, just by either adding or not some pressure. When you're doing a group of strokes, you should make yourself either an imaginary or maybe a pencil dot on your surface. You want to pull each stroke in that series toward that common dot. If 
if when you're pulling your strokes you end up with angles that means you've released pressure too quickly you need to again lay the brush down I'm starting to release pressure as almost as soon as I start and pull through that stroke now I am right-handed so for me it's easier to pull a stroke that starts on the left and pulls to the left going toward me if I'm working on a stroke that's going the other direction I just turn my surface a little bit lay my brush down and do it sideways or you might find it easier to just push that stroke away from you so I'm pressing down again I'm curving off to the left but when I look at that stroke facing me it's going to be curved to the right to make a design a little bit more interesting I like to use color step strokes with color step strokes you usually start with your main color as the largest stroke and in this case I slowly got lighter and lighter and lighter as I went up and then on this side I got a little bit darker I'm going to show you how to do those strokes right now again I'm using my Josanya number no. six short liner loading in my water and blotting on my paper towel I'm going to start off by loading in deco art avocado And I'm going to pull my first stroke. I'm going to pick up a little bit more avocado in my brush and place it somewhere else on my palette. I'm going in with Deco Art True Ochre and I'm mixing that color together with all the paint in my brush. So I'm really pressing down as I'm mixing these colors together. So I'm getting a little lighter color. If I need to add more moisture, if my brush feels too dry, all I'm going to do is tip the very tips of my bristles in my water, come to this new puddle, and mix it up. I do not want to add any more paint. If I add paint, I'm going to change the color, and I don't want to do that. So this stroke is going to go on the opposite side of my first stroke and you can see that it's just a tiny bit lighter I'm going to come back to my true ochre pick up a little bit more in my brush coming back to this same puddle again I'm mixing these colors really well into the puddle and into my brush Going to pick up just that tip of water from my water and mix it in I'm going to add the next stroke in this series I'm going to pick up again just a little bit more true ochre mix it one more time in my brush I think, I think I'm good I'm not going to add any extra water for this one If I want to go a little bit darker, I'm just going to kind of reverse the process. I'm going to clean my brush out now. I'm going to again load in my base color, which was the avocado. And I'm going to pick up a little darker color in my brush. In this case, I'm going in with Deco Art Plantation Pine, coming over to another part of my palette, and I'm mixing those colors together. On this color I'm going to lay next to my first stroke it doesn't show up a whole lot maybe on the camera but it is just a tad darker I'm going to come back over to my plantation pine pick up a little more in my brush mix that into my puddle and my brush and add another stroke could also add black green or something this is going to show up a little bit better on your black palette if if you're using a black or your black background I should say I'm going to pick up a little bit more plantation pine just because I want to put one more stroke in there 
mix that all in and add my last stroke to this group. And as you can see, all of these strokes are pulled to kind of a common point. When you're doing groups of strokes, you need to remember to do that. Again, when you're working on the, these kinds of strokes, the important thing to remember is you pick up a little bit of the next color you want to use, mix it into that extra puddle on your palette. Do not pick up any more paint in your brush. If you need moisture, just tip the bristles of your brush in your water, mix it into the puddle, and pull your stroke. You can add a really nice S-stroke border to a design, or if your pattern calls for an S-stroke, you need to add those too. I, again, like to use my Josanya number no. 6 liner. I found find a round brush easier to control than a flat brush, although sometimes a flat brush is good to use as well. Just like with comma strokes, your pattern for your S strokes is usually going to have two lines on it. Again, this is just a guide. You do not have to fill in the entire area. What I like to do is just take a line right down the center of the stroke and use that as my guide. Just like with comma strokes, I'm going to wet my brush, blot it on my paper towel, and load it in my puddle of paint. In this case, I'm again using the Deco Art Avocado. I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit more moisture in there. You're going to start your stroke on the tip. I'm using no pressure as I pull through this stroke or get get started on this stroke and as I start pulling I slowly apply pressure and then when I get to the bottom curve I slowly release pressure and end up back on my chisel edge just like with a comma stroke if you end up with angles You're starting and stopping your pressure too quickly. You need to pull through the stroke, a nice fluid line. And as with a comma stroke, since this stroke ended toward the left and I'm right-handed, it's easier for me to pull it toward myself. If I want to pull a stroke going in the opposite direction, I just turn my surface and either go sideways or upside down to pull that stroke. For me it's usually easier to do sideways but you need to practice and see what works for you. You can pull um, highlighted strokes loading my brush again good and flat from the side of the puddle so that creates kind of a flat brush. I'm going to pick up Deco Art True Ochre on one side and blend it back and forth on my palette on the same path so I'm not wasting moisture and then I'm going to pull my stroke same as before start on the chisel edge to just pull get the stroke started press down and through and release the pressure and then I have a little yellow edge along the one side. As I said, you can also pull these strokes with a flat brush. Again, you need to wet it in your water. In this case, I'm using a number eight by Black Gold. Nice and flat as you load that brush. You need to make sure there are no blobs of color on either side you want the brush to be nice and flat like it was just wet. As if you have blobs of color on there you're going to, once you put your brush down, they're going to spread out to the sides and you don't want that to happen. So again I'm starting on the chisel edge of the brush. Pull, press through, and release pressure. 
And as before, I can pick up true ochre in a corner of the brush. Blend out. You see I'm blending in the exact same place I did before, so I'm not wasting any of that paint. And actually add a little bit more water to my brush. I think I need just a tad more. And again, chisel edge to start my, my stroke. Press through and release pressure. I hope I've answered any questions you might have. You can contact me at bbunsey at calicogoose.com if you have any questions. You can see my stroke work patterns on my site at www.calicogoose.com. The key word to strokes is practice. What I advise people to do is put your tracing paper on top of your pattern and paint on top of that so you get the good direction for whatever stroke you're working on. Thanks for watching and have a great day.